but if you have any questions at all, I'm happy to answer what I can. I'm no professional. I'm just kind of the web person on the board, and I'd love to answer anything I can to help you guys. But just wanted to mark the occasion. This is our 10th anniversary for the Central Pain Syndrome Foundation, and we are really stoked to have moved from a Yahoo discussion group this was 10 years ago. I think over 10 years ago they started. And um, I know Louise um, Mauder was a huge part of that, and I really hope she can join us tonight. I'm not sure if she is at a computer or not. Hey, Scott, good to see you. Um, okay, I'm going to skip to another subject because Tim Paris just suggested I discuss Dr. Tennant. So for those of you who don't know, Dr. Forrest Tennant from California is – known as the founding father of all pain clinics. And he is such an incredible dude. He, um, I would love to shake his hand. I know Tim has met him before and I would love to meet him as well. So he has discovered throughout his like, I don't know, probably 50 plus years in medical practice, what pain does over time once, whether it was a peripheral injury or an injury to the central nervous system, a shock to the central nervous system, and even a peripheral shock what it does over time, if not resolved, is now being called centralized. So centralized pain can look a lot like central pain syndrome, and he's very knowledgeable about both centralized pain and central pain syndrome. So what I've found is that he tends to talk more about centralized pain at these bigger conventions because I think more diseases fall under that category than just central pain syndrome. But I want to talk about central pain syndrome since that's what ties us all together. And he has since, so there's a lot of things that have happened in the last couple of years with his practice, but he basically over, you know, seven, eight years ago discovered this hormone protocol that was, um, is basically a combination of what, when we're pregnant, what the hormones that the pregnancy, you know, is, is happening to create the spinal cord, the brain, the whole central nervous system of the baby. And also it's, there's, you know, a hormone called oxytocin that's a huge pain killer. We sometimes know of it within the mental health realm just because it's, um, yeah. And okay, I'll, I'll give a little leak on that in a minute, Scott. Hang on. <laughs> You're getting ahead of me. Um, but anyways, so the oxytocin is a huge painkiller. Some people use it for mood lifter. Um, so I was blessed and grateful to be able to get on the protocol. I searched in vain for a year, and I would love to talk with anyone who wants to talk with me about hormones, about my process of finding a doctor to prescribe them. It was, it was tough, but now I think it'd be a lot easier than it was. That was 20... Um, 16 and 17 that I first um, was able to get on them. So those are really helping me. They're central nervous system restoring hormones. Um, and basically, whether you have peripheral pain from a peripheral injury that has centralized, or you have central pain syndrome from a stroke, or a spinal cord injury, brain injury, anything that's a shock to the central nervous system, surgeries can cause this for some. It's medication, which just absolutely sucks. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I had a head injury, a, a, a very minor concussion, and I did not even consider myself ever having had a brain injury until doc I saw Dr. Tennant's video, and he said, have you ever hit your head hard enough to black out? That could cause centralized pain. And I realized, wait, I did black out. <laughs> so that's when I realized, you know, I actually could fit in this category, and I started pursuing the hormone route. So all that to say, Dr. Tennant is amazing. He came up with this protocol. It's working for a lot of people. You know, some people have tried it and it hasn't worked for them to the degree they want it to. Sometimes that's because they're on high dose opioids. They need to get off those first or come up with a plan. And he has just got such a <laughs> thanks. I appreciate him. Uh, he's just got such a, you know, immense background and knowledge with his patients. And unfortunately, the um, his his practice was kind of closed out before he wanted it to be, but he has continued to work within creating protocols and within helping foundations like ours to you know really educate patients, doctors, anyone in the medical field that is in desperate, which everyone is right now in desperate need of knowledge about this really complex you know syndrome. So he has agreed. He was the very first, I believe, right first. A board member on our advisory council that we invited and that accepted, and I think you know everyone we've invited has accepted pretty much. He um, 
he is going to be prayerfully, hopefully, right, coming to, we're going to have a conference in 2020, hopefully, in Florida, we're thinking, which is amazing because I live here. And I want to welcome all you guys to the wonderful warm state, especially if it's in like January, February, because that's, you know, it's freezing everywhere else. It's frozen everywhere else, but it's still sunny in beaches here. So we would love to have you. Um, he will hopefully be our, you know, main guest speaker or one of the lineup in the, in the speakers. Um, that'd be amazing. So yeah, Scott's talking about hormones. So the, um, and honestly, anything you guys want to add in here, the discussion, I'm just like going to fill the space if no one asks anything because I feel I can, <laughs> but please direct the conversation as you, as you see fit. The first step in getting a hormone protocol started is getting a profile done, uh, getting her hormone, hormone profile. Sorry. I do still have like word, you know, you guys get it. I know you get it. And we all have our things, right? Some of mine are like brain glitches, words, verbal dyslexia, you know, dyslexics are people poo. So, um, okay. So the hormone pro, uh, profile or panel is like the first thing you want to get tested. There's a little search bar and you can click, see search in this group. And there's also topics like popular topics, popular group topics, and you can search those for hormones and then you can see my uber long post I made. I wrote a book about the hormones. It's not really that long. It's like a six page, six paragraph paper. Um, and just explaining my process with getting on the hormones, what I found when, if you're in the UK, if you're in other countries, how you can maybe, you know, get tested and possibly find a doctor. Um, Tim says that tenants protocol gave him some of the first hope in, of his improvement back in 2013. And I know Tim shared a little bit on his page if you're friends with him uh, today about, you know, we were all posting about this being the 10th anniversary and he had mentioned, which I didn't know this, that he really was in a lot of pain from 2011 to 2017. And it's amazing. I mean, Tim is, Tim story, Tim's story has been like a beacon of hope for me because uh, he's followed similar protocols that I've been, you know, following along between the books and just kind of the methods of what we're into a mix of holistic and, you know, alternative and, and traditional medicine. Um, and also just a, a huge understanding that we can affect positive change within our own bodies as long as we're concentrating on using our minds for us and not letting our minds use itself against us, if that makes sense. And it's not a think your pain away, wish your pain away, hope your pain away kind of a mindset because, you know, I think that there's a, there's like a stigma that says in the doctor culture that says like, oh, it's all in your head. And when we hear people say things like mindfulness or, you know, neuroplasticity, maybe we can think what they're saying is it's all our responsibility because we brought this on ourselves or we did something to deserve it. And now it's all up to us. And if we're still sick, then it's our fault. And that is absolutely not what we're saying. <laughs> not what, at least not what I want to get across. You know, maybe, maybe you've heard that somewhere and there's been like a mixed message and I, I certainly can understand that. Um, but for me, it's, you know, I've, I've learned that just choosing to be positive in the midst of great tragedy, in the midst of great, um, depression in the midst of great, you know, stagnation of life and just pain in general, daily pain. Um, a positive outlook and an expectancy is something that you cannot take a pill for, if you know what I mean. Um, you, you have to catch it. You don't, you know, you don't teach it, you have to catch it. And it will, it'll change your life. It just will. Like, I think as long as you're focused on giving and other people and what you can contribute. Um, there's a certain amount of pain that you're just not going to experience during that day because you chose to turn your inner limelight from looking at you to looking at, you know, how can I bless or help or, you know, support or comfort someone else today. All that to say, I'm really excited, blessed to be a part of the board. Um, I was shocked out of my socks that I was even like thought of as someone to you know, to ask to join or anything. Um, 
with tenants protocol and continued um, additional machines such as the Beamer, frequency specific microcurrent, I have experienced a huge shift in my pain over the last three years especially. Um, but last year, like last summer, um, the, the frequencies kind of compounded in my system after doing nightly treatments for 12 plus hours every night. And over a couple months time, I just, I just started getting waves of relief and they just kept coming and not leaving. And I was like, I literally was like in a fetal position and, um, just curled up and I could tell when I was having a bad day because my right, like my right hind brain, shoulder, arm, hand, all have different injury points. And when I'm right-handed too. So like my hand would kind of be and my arm would be at my side and my hand would kind of be like crippled up and I have like long fingers. So I, it just, I looked like a skeleton to myself, you know, and I could tell if I was having a bad day because it would like shake and I had a tremor and I would just be like curled up and just want everything to go away. You know, I just would be like, why, why try, you know? And that's where I was a year ago. And I had literally had to be, I mean, I know some of you have experienced this, but we set up a um, series of like thin mats and blankets in the back seat of my two door car with bucket seats in the back. And I was laying back there just in agonizing pain. Lakeland so three hours there three hours back and I would do a 71 minute treatment which is you know an hour and 11 minutes and then I would if time would allow do as many other treatments as I could I usually had about two and a half hours because of the literally like if we got in the car at 5 a.m. like I'd get there in time to just the way that the practice worked out and everything the way that it worked out so I was like fetal position curled up could not drive could not anything had to be driven there um, got there, would put this wet cloth around my neck and my ankles with these frequencies and drink, I mean, so much water. It was ridiculous. I was like, can I also have a catheter? Cause this is like a lot of water. So anyways, it's just making trips back and forth to the bathroom. And, um, I started getting relief from the central pain frequency. And that was the first kind of glimmer of hope. I mean, this is after the hormones and after, every possible emotion has hit me with the hormones and the pregnancy feeling and all of the things. But, you know, once the frequencies kind of started working with the hormones, everything was going like this, like on the upswing. And, um, since last summer, like my pain got down to, you know, as low as a two and as high as like a four or five from like a daily seven, eight before plus, before. I mean, I was really in like 11 pain, you know, but we always, we're always like, yeah, well, someone else is like 20 you know, out of one out of 10, 20 is like my like eight. So, you know, that's kind of how, how we do when we're in constant agonizing pain, we kind of like downplay as much as possible. Sometimes I get it. And I, and I think it's not the best thing to do, but you know, we're, we're a family here. We understand each other. Um, so I am so grateful that those things have worked for me. I am so devastated when I find people that I can't through the group that I cannot yet help to get access to these things. Like, and I, okay, I take HCG, right? Pregnancy hormone. I still get emotional about the silliest things, but I get emotional about what I get, you know, excited about or that moves my heart. So there's, you know, there's folks even here in this group right now who are watching that I would love to help you guys get on the frequencies and try them. Um, or the hormones and there's things blocking that right now, whether it be where you live or, you know, the doctors you can see or the insurance. And I totally get that. Scott's asking, how do the two treatments work together? What I found is researching, you can look at frequency specific.com and there's like a PDF there that explains that frequency specific microcurrent can, can add back ATP, which is basically energy to the cells by up to 500%. And what's different about frequency specific microcurrent versus just microcurrent is that it, it tunes to a specific frequency. So imagine, imagine there's like 1000 channels, your body is a TV and there's 1000 channels. So the microcurrent is the power source, but each channel individually is a frequency. So sunburn, like when your skin gets sunburned, there's a frequency that will tune just to that. If you have liver failure, there's a frequency that will tune just to that. If you have cancer, like the literally anything you can think of that 
would be an ailment. So for me, you know, I have used ones that have worked because of the injuries that have caused my centralized pain or central pain syndrome. I do technically have central pain syndrome since I had a central nervous system shock or, you know, injury, which for me was a minor concussion again. Water therapy is a huge thing Scott's recommending, and I'm going to get to that too. So I'm going to transition a second from like the things I do and what I recommend because I feel like y'all can go on the CPSF website. You can read my story. You can read all the recommended alternative things, and those are basically things I've tried or things that are working for a combination of me and a couple other people. So you can find all that info there. Um, but they work together because the hormones are restorative, and they don't only restore the nerves. Here's an interesting fact. There's, and I know this is controversial, I'm not going to get into the controversial fact of it, but about 35 years ago, scientists took lab rats and they snapped their spines and broke them. They were paralyzed and then they gave them HCG, and which is human chorionic gonadotropin. It's the hormone, one of the two, the in combo that Dr. Tennant uses in that protocol I was mentioning earlier, oxytocin and human chorionic gonadotropin. So, and Tim says it's a big help for him to water is. So I'm going to talk about that too. Okay, now using um, using the HCG, they completely restored the spines of the rats, and their spines regrew to the point of functionality. And you know, I don't know if you can like whisper like the dog whisper, like whisper to a rat, like, "Hey, are you in pain?" But like they were acting normal again, like as though you know, no problem. So that's mind-blowing in and of itself and you know but i think given enough years given enough hcg given enough you know uh everything it could it could happen you know and dr Tennant has been overseeing patients for had been overseeing patients for more than uh, seven eight years maybe nine years by the time that he um had to stop seeing patients you know his patients had been on hcg and had seen huge leaps and bounds of some of the some of his patients were doctors who were completely debilitated could not go back to practicing they got on the hormones and then they were able to go back to life again which is crazy so um that's kind of how they work in tandem is that the atp being restored to the cells the energy is what speeds up the recovery process of the whole body. And it also, you know, you want to bring oxygen to your cells. So that's what the Beamer is about, bringing oxygen and blood flow. Um, and I can talk to anyone about that. That's a different device and it's a different route. It may it may totally do it, do it and be it for you. I have found for me, there's no one thing that's like it, you know? It's a combo, it's always a combo. So the hormones being, restorative, not only for the bone of the spine, but also for the nerves surrounding it, the fibers, the muscles, tissue, everything. It completely restores the central nervous system, including the brain, which what a relief, because if you've seen Dr. Tennant's video, um, you know that, you know, he, he mentions that um, central pain syndrome as a diagnosis is essentially early onset dementia because of the the way that the glial cells attack the white and gray matter in the brain and it's pretty scary i mean i was in devastating pain for years but after years of that started experiencing severe brain malfunction and thought i was literally going crazy um but it makes so much sense now in light of that being like dementia so that has been being reversed for me and my my words have come back my brain has come back so much of my ability to you know i know i'm not necessarily staying on perfect topic here in this discussion um so tim and scott both mentioned that water really helps them and water was my like only pain relief and salvation for years hot water for me now uh, some people you know ice and cold really she says i don't love the cold but when it's like numbingly cold it helps my pain awesome i love that for me it had to be like your body feels detached from your head kind of heat <laughs> you know so hot um that you're like just can't stand up like i would have to change the temperature of the water back down to like room temperature for a number of minutes to then even be able to stand up that's how hot i had to make it to get out of pain so salts oils whatever you want to use for me the oils don't work but salt epsom salt and like sea salt you know just anything that will that will suck out of you the the you know detox kind of your your skin and your system um that 
but I really think there's something to be said for, and I was talking with someone earlier today about this, like something to be said for what you, what you put into your body while you're doing the best you can with the treatment. So while I was like soaking in the tub, I would listen to things that would inspire me, things that would take my mind off the pain, things that would take my mind, you know, into traveling or into um, the future or anywhere that I could escape to, you know, distraction therapy really is our best. Scott says in one, 104 degrees Fahrenheit hot tub um, his pain disappears and then he stretches and I think Scott is like the poster child for how to do a really good pool regimen you know between the the hot tub and then the sauna and he does these stretching and then he has huge disequilibrium uh, he was telling me about some problems and he's he's doing the hardest route possible fixing that by causing himself intentionally causing like severe unbalance and then I don't even know exactly how it works but it sounds it sounds like he's just you know he's really taking his his own treatment in his hands seriously and the doctor he was seeing you know was like oh there's nothing that can help that and by nothing he meant there's something you can do but you would never as in you as in most of my patients would never care to give so much effort and so much pain for something that's going to be, you know, such a difficult to achieve result. But Scott's the man. He's the one. He's that 1% who's going to, you know, do it whatever it takes and the, take the hard route. So he's definitely the kind of guy you guys want leading this foundation. He's the president of this foundation. And I'm so blessed and grateful to be on his team and on this board with him and Tim and Michelle and um, Robert Bechtel is on our board. We're, we're really appreciative of him. He is, um, he's just, he's just the funny bone, you know, he's humor. He's great. And um, Kathy James just joined our board. She's our research guru. So if you see her posting in the group about articles, you know, she just does a lot of research and she's really posting cutting edge um, information. So you definitely want to check all that out. But Hey, if water's not your thing, water's not your thing. Maybe, you know, like a, a fan or a, a heating fan. For me, my, um, because I've been treating with frequency specific microcurrent, basically my um, hips up for the last over, over a year now. Um, I haven't, like, I have a lot of pain in my hips, knees, and my left ankle from injuries, but that pain is nothing compared to the pain, like, from the line, you know, down here, my shoulder, all that. So, been treating my upper body, my lower body. This is a funny thing. Before frequency specific microcurrent, I I was like freezing. And Dr. Tennant said this one time too. He said you can I can diagnose someone with central pain whether like based on whether their hand is numb cold when I go to shake it. Because you know the periphery usually um, gets affected in that way. So once I was doing frequencies and now have you know my hands now are like much closer to a normal temperature. It's my feet that are freezing all the time. So I usually have an electric blanket on my lower half and it's on high and I have like fuzzy socks, fuzzy everything. So I sleep with one on me and then I, during the day if I'm home, I lay in a recliner and I have one on me and like my computer on top of that and then my cat. And so it's like just everything warm, fuzzy, soft. That is a big comfort and pain relief to me. So you know, for some of us, it's heat, or if we can't change temperature, you know, and then maybe it's, like, soft, you know, we need just, like, a really soft bed, a really soft, you know, something cushy, I don't know, it's it's different for every person. Like, Scott uses compression clothing, for example, so those of you with stroke may find it helpful to do um, compression clothing, like, the kind, I think he's told me, like, the kind that skiers use, or as far as the compression, but Scott is your man to ask about that. Um, Tim says he also couldn't find a doctor willing to prescribe the hormone treatment. It's tough, I must say. Um, I'm really sorry for the, the, yeah, difficulty there, Tim, but I'm really glad that you're out of pain now, and even if that wasn't it for you, you know, you found some other things, some, some ways to rewire your brain and a lot of things, which were really helpful. So I found, um, that, pr okay, I know this is super basic, y'all probably already know this, but printing all the information I can on Tenant and his protocols, then um, doing the best job possible of being as kind and respectful of the doctor in front of me and 
not trying at all to discredit their their knowledge, but just letting them know, hey, there's this other doctor, and he actually, like, he has these amazing credentials, and this protocol has been working for these other people for you know almost a decade now, and all I all I'm really needing is um, someone willing to try it and oversee it with me. Uh, there's no risk, you know, the, the, the HCG literally has no side effects, oxytocin, no side effects. Um, when I was reading Tennant's list of like potential side effects for HCG, it was like, you might have a little acne and a tiny bit of hair loss. And I was like, I can live with that. But I don't know if this is just me or if it's because it's a pregnancy hormone or what, but I, you know, there were more side effects for me, but they were all completely in line with how you would feel if you had, you know, got pregnant and then went through the nine months of just the emotions of pregnancy. Um, and it wasn't so ridiculous that I was going to stop it, especially now, see, this is one point I might be different than y'all on. My CPS is highly tied for whatever reasons to my hormones. Um, because I would get these spine freeze ups and they started just from like a breathing thing, a weird, like one night where I just felt like I had an air bubble in my stomach and I almost had to like, you know, imagine someone up against a wall with their head on the floor, like in their feet up, like pushing the air bubble, like with gravity, you know, down. And, um, that's kind of how that started. But then it later was tied solely to, you know, me being a woman and hormonal and, and those times. Yay. So that's when my spine would freeze up and I would have to just hyperventilate. So once I got on HCG, um, I had an interesting experience. This is funny, uh, going along with the doctors and the babies, right? So the doctor who started me on it was a doctor I literally met twice. And the first time I met him, um, on the HCG, first time I met him, he was like, you are 25 years old. What are you doing here? First of all, are you a seeker? Like, are you a, you know, drug seeker? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm in extreme excruciating pain. I have been for a long time. And I'm, I've, got half of this protocol that I'm on, the last doctor who literally walked off the job two days ago and you just took his place, uh, gave me the oxytocin and was willing to oversee that, but he was not willing to try the HCG just because he had no experience in it. And all I would like to do is try it. And he said, okay, why not? So I was just as shocked as you would imagine yourself to be after talking to like 20 million other doctors and getting a no, 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 no. Yeah. We do the no dance in this house, the rejection, you know, no, 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 no. So, um, he, Hey, Michelle's here. Woohoo. Party. So, um, okay. Netherlands. Hey, how you doing? Anyways, Canada. Cool. I love it. Texas. Hey, Texas. I love Texas. I used to hate Texas. I'm so sorry that I hated it, but I almost died there and that's why I hated it. And now Chip and Joanna Gaines are there and so I love it. We're doing a relaunch now, so we're excited to just get the word out there, but we really just care about each each of you individually and we just want you to have a safe space where you can get answered, where you can find friends, where you can um, just you know come and have camaraderie with other people this to us, you know, we see that it's a big task with the central pain syndrome foundation in terms of how many people are getting strokes and central pain and spinal cord injuries and all these things throughout a given year's time. We know it's a big task to educate the, you know, million really and more that are going to be getting CPS in the next year or worldwide. But, um, you know, we, we, while we see there's a big number, while we see there's a big thing to do here. We're very much focused on, you know, one person at a time and one person, you know, just making connections with, with everyone we can and helping every single person we can. We're not like, Oh, look, there's only 11 people here. Like that's, we should end the lives. No, that's not like how we think, you know, I, I don't think that way. And I don't think anyone else on the board thinks that way. Um, when we have our, our board meetings, it's very, you know, just casual. And, and it's like, we're all a family just catching up. Like Michelle's dogs join in, they, they bark and it's fun and we all kind of giggle and it's, and then we talk about all the exciting, serious, big things like the, like the conference coming up and like, um, yes, we talk about all the things that you would expect a nonprofit foundation to discuss and to talk about and to have clarity on. Um, but we also, we just, we just recognize we're all in pain. We're all patients with CPS as well. We just know the struggle. We want to help everyone we can. 
and we, you know, we get it that everyone's concoction of treatments, of methods, of blah, 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 it's all different for everyone, um, and we just want to help everyone. So I'm going to turn off the, okay, um, endocrinologists are great. They tend, that what I found, it's my experience, I have never talked to an endocrinologist who's like, sure, I'm a pain specialist too. They're always like, I'm a hormone specialist, and I can help you balance your hormones. But for me, when I took the hormone panel to learn what I'd have to balance before getting on the HCG and oxytocin, was already balanced in my hormones. And, a, and an endocrinologist would have been like, well, that's all I can do for you, sorry. But, you know, pain specialists, um, they sometimes would be willing, if an endocrinologist were overseeing you, to prescribe it, the HCG. Or vice versa, they would they would let the endocrinologist prescribe it for you, and they will oversee your your process with it. What we hope to do is just facilitate a place for you guys to come uh, through the group, make connections. You know, personal message, private message, whatever we call it, private message. Anyone you want um, from the board, from you know, just if someone's friendly, someone has a suggestion, you want to get into further discussion with someone on something, you know, start a discussion that matters. Like just. You know, we're really just wanting to keep it rolling, keep the conversation going, keep opening doors. Um, we're trying really hard to not berate anyone with, you know, repetitive information that's, you know, hey, check this out. Hey, check this out again. Hey, check, have you looked at it? Have you? Yeah, no, not very fun. And I'm trying really hard to be creative about, you know, my posts and everything. So, okay, thanks, Michelle. So, um, anyways, the, I think that was probably like a thumbs up to the, message us because again there's a lag so I don't really know what you guys are like thumbs up thumbs downing harding me on exactly but I appreciate it I really do um okay Beth your question is how has Dr. Tennant's method helped you so I wonder if that's to everyone here in the group or just to me um but for me personally his um his method with using the hormones has helped me tremendously so I'm going to try to condense it and point you in a direction where you can find all the information and to read on your own time. So I'm not taking up everyone's time with just me. But um, if, you, if you're on Instagram, go find the CPSF um, account, which is CPSF Online. And on that account, I am, um, I'm in charge of that account. I have, there's three people that I'm following and we're all board members um, who post about central pain syndrome on our personal Instagrams and I'm the only Kelsey there. So find Kelsey and then if you um, look, there's a CPS um, highlights in the circle. I just added this and if you click on that, it will show up like this where, okay, let's see if I can show. So each of these, you know, these were all posts that I made about you know something that helped me um, or where I was on my process so if you if you tap the photo you can hit see post sorry tap it hit see post then it will take you to the post and you can literally all of those are the most best I can condense the information and my process with hormones and tenants protocol um, through the timeline that it was through you know candidly how I felt how it was helping me, everything. Um, so you can just look at each individual post. It starts from the beginning. So if you click on the first post, the one of roses, um, it will take you just to, it's saying if you go to this blog post, you'll read, you know, that's kind of like where I was at my low point, you know, just in a lot of agony. But if you go back, just swipe back and then click on the next one, the little um, water drops, hit see post. Again, that's just some truth. But if you, as you go along, and especially, um, so especially the one that is the black and white when I had my hair cut like that, right? That one gives like a ton of information about um, the hormones and just what the protocols I found. But all of those posts, I, I did that just recently to give you guys specifically a, a, a key reference point that was simple and easy to find what has made a difference for me, what the timeline has been on it, and the information. So I am, though, going to answer your question here because I don't want to just send you guys on a rabbit chase that's going to, like, take a, a ton of time. I'm going to, like, give myself a little more light here. Um, so uh, um, the hormones, the hormone protocol has been amazing for me. It's, it's 
central nervous system restoring hormones. So the human chorionic gonadotropin has been known in uh, scientific studies to actually completely regenerate the, the spinal cord of rats that were tested, that lab rats, that their spines were broken. And um, it has the potential to be able to do that for people as well. For me personally, it has brought my brain and mind back clear and my spine episodes. Remember I was mentioning earlier those like those lockup episodes where I literally, it would, it, was, it would be like this. You know, I feel like, okay, I have to crack my back, right? Do a little back crack and then snap. Something would snap and it was like, oh, I literally cannot breathe unless I'm hyperventilating. And I would have to like bend over the back tub, bathtub because I thought, I'm either going to puke or pass out or both, and it was the only way I could breathe. So those spine episodes after um, one week of being on HCG completely went away from me. No, one month. I'm sorry, one month. And what happened that I never finished the story about the baby earlier, sorry, this is one of those things I didn't finish, was um, that the doctor who first started me on those hormones, he, his wife went into early labor and had a baby the exact day I was supposed to go back and get a refill. And he only gave me one month exactly's worth. So I had one month to be on the hormones. Um, is Tim leaving? Bye, Tim. Good to see you. Glad you were here. Um, his wife had this baby, and uh, there was no other doctor who could step in and prescribe that for me. So for one exact week, I went, like, I had been on HCG my very first time on it, one full month. Then, what? Cold turkey went without for one full week, and my spine episodes just, yeah, I, I had to be carried from the couch to, like, the toilet, and then, like, back to the couch. It was that bad, um, just so bad. So um, those completely went away from me. So if you have any kind of spinal cord pain, I know um, there's some here who've had spinal cord injuries. Uh, if HCG is something that you can look into, and potentially get on, I highly recommend it. It's, it's so worth it. Um, and I'm so sorry, again, for those, I know there's some here who cannot, you know, for whatever reason right now, get on some of the protocols I'm on, whether it be doctors or, you know, country, unable to find, there's 10 hours away to find the nearest doctor to do whatever it may be. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I wish I could trade places with you. I truly do. Um, spinal cord episodes were horrendous. And I, I mean, how do you even plan like your life around that? You, you can't, I mean, and I get it. Y'all are dealing with this too. Like we, we think, okay, I can, I, you know, move all my body parts a little bit. I can like breathe today. All right. You know, I guess I'll go out in the garden and look at the birds for five minutes or try to plan coffee with a friend or like, you know, maybe we, maybe there's a lot of us here too who aren't even at that stage where like, you know, it's more like having a friend come at, come to our house and like make us tea at our house or whatever it may be, you know, it's just that, um, yeah, excruciating and intractable. That's exactly right. And so tenant again, Dr. Tennant's like focus is helping, helping not students, I'm sorry, helping <laughs> patients with intractable pain live life to the best degree they can with management programs, with treatments, with potential, you know, I don't want to go as far to say as a cure, really, but, you know, the potential of the hormones reversing the process that was starting in my brain, at least, of dementia, yes, I would definitely say dementia has been reversed in my, in my experience. Um, so I have high hopes for the hormones working for a lot of other people. When we're, you know, there's, there's days, there's years, there's seasons, we're just going through the motions, we're kind of just there. For me, and I know for a lot of you, like, just our only escape, or maybe, and it's, can't believe this is even a thing that exists and that people have to experience, but, you know, sleep is my only escape from the pain completely, and so many of us, like, just don't get sleep, and it's pain insomnia all over. I take 200 milligrams of trazodone. I weigh 134, three something pounds, and that's a lot of trazodone for someone my size. Um, see if you can get on trazodone. I hope it works for you. I literally, though, I take 200 milligrams of trazodone. I take three combined, um, it's valerian and hops put together, 
And then I take two of these huge like GABA lemon balm things from the health food vitamin store. And I take four, no, four tryptophan, which equates to 2000 milligrams of tryptophan and a spoonful of magnesium in my water. And I take all that and I get, I mean, this, okay, you have to know, I have, I have been through it with sleep. So I'm so sorry, you guys, if you're going through it now. I get it. I totally get it. I went through it. I was like, I was like a new mom, like so chronically sleep deprived for like four or more years, just constant. And then I finally got on trazodone. Yay. Got some sleep. Then one of my doctors took me off trazodone and I didn't sleep for a year. And that's the year I started, um, the frequencies. So yay, I was running the programs all night and what up all night, not sleeping. Yay. So now that I'm back on it again, um, unfortunately that doctor, the amazing one who started me on the frequencies had an unexpected heart attack. He has passed on now and I'm so sad, but like the, the only positive thing that came from that. And I, I don't mean it like that. Like, I mean, he, he just was such an incredible, incredible doctor, but I was able to get back on trazodone, you know, with another doctor that, that was able to see that I really needed it. So that was, he just wanted to see me off it to know how much pain I was in, which is the, like, I, he, I commend him for his methods. He is, he's hardcore, but you know, the way he would do it, um, helping, you know, just people get cured. He was amazing at that. But, um, I wasn't able to stick with him as a doctor, you know, for, for long enough to go through all of his methodology. I just wanted to provide some, some valuable information, start a conversation about the CPSF 10 year anniversary. Um, I don't mean to be popping in and out and back and forth about my story, which you can just go read about on the CPSF website. Um, but I kind of just wanted to get any questions answered I could. Um, so now that I'm on trazodone and all those other things, I'm finally sleeping for like 12 hours a night and it is, oh, I'm so sorry, you guys, if you're angry at me about that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm, it's like the only reason I'm functional is because I'm sleeping a ton, doing treatments literally 24 seven. I have my machine attached to me right now and, um, the hormones, I, I kind of like attribute my now health, my ability to have this conversation with you right now. Have I tried the pain plaster? I have no idea what the pain plaster is. Sounds like some kind of mold you make with clay. I don't know. Tell me about it. Um, if you sleep for more than six, painkillers wear off. Yeah, right. So sleep deprived, two hours or so. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. You know, exper you experiment with CPS. We're like professional experimenters. <laughs> you experiment, you try something, you change something. The biggest thing that my doctor who passed away taught me was one thing at a time. And it was so hard for me to do that, um, to really get everything minimized and only ever change one thing for like one or two weeks at a time and see what happened. Um, that was so difficult, but it was, it was worth it because I could finally figure out, you know, what was making a difference, what wasn't. Um, if you change like two things at once, you just, you won't know two or more things. I'm sorry to say, but you're not going to figure out what's helping or what's not helping. Uh, just small adjustments. I, I never want to sound like I'm putting anyone down for things to me that sound very, very, very basic and very, um, you know, like, doesn't everyone know that? And yet, it's like, these are things that in, in doctor's offices, doctors would tell me, you know, one thing at a time or print something out and bring it to the doctor or, you know, uh, have you tried soaking in hot water? Like, you know what I mean? Those are all such, such things that I never want to make it sound like I'm putting you guys down by like, you know, you should try this. But, um, if you're not already aware, if you just need to be reminded of these simple things, like, that's helped me so much. So I, I'm just only assuming it's going to help you too. If, if there was someone who came to our group and was like, Hey, I found this Amazonian bug that if you swallow it every day, like just cut its head off and swallow it, you'll be cured. Like I'm sure we'd try, you know, I, HCG. I was terrified of needles and I inject myself now every day with a needle with HCG, but Hey, thankfully it's a needle. Literally, I mean, you can't even hardly see it. It's like the size of hair. 
and it goes into the fat, which does not hurt. So like where you're used to getting um, an arm shot or a leg shot, that's IM, intramuscular. This is sub Q, subcutaneously, which is to the fat. And um, so you don't feel it. It doesn't hurt. And um, yeah, but the we'll, we'll try anything, right? I hear you. I just, I am excited personally about the potential of some of these alternative things that can help people that aren't like a, you know, hey, pay us $25,000 and there's a 30% success rate so far and you may get a one level drop down of your pain, possibly. Join the, join the trial. Like that, that just, you know, I want more than that and I wanna give you guys uh, the hope of more than that. And it's not up to me, but it's, you know, these doctors who are finding these, these alternative routes and Dr. Um, Carolyn McMakin, who has, McMakin, sorry, who has discovered the frequencies and pairing them. You know, Dr. Robinson, the doctor I had who, who had a heart attack, he made the central pain frequency. Now, I have exclusive access to that frequency through the headquarters because in order to get it moved, get that frequency moved from his computer to my current doctor's computer, it um, it required, it was really weird. I had to call the headquarters and they had to remotely go into their, into Dr. Robinson's computer, download the files and then put them in this other doctor's. So they they normally don't download from doctors. So if doctors create their own frequencies, the headquarters could easily go in there and, and download them or take them and have them as having an access point for you know any doctor using those frequencies with the microcurrent. But they usually don't. But the fact that Dr. Robinson had passed away and I needed another doctor and needed that frequency put back on my machine because it was when you go with a new doctor and you plug your machine into their machine, it deletes everything. So we had to put it back on. Um, the fact that I had to do that gave the headquarters complete access to the central pain syndrome or central pain it's called, polarizing and alternating frequencies that my doctor made. Now those are the ones that gave me again, such relief that my pain went down to a level two in the second treatment I tried. Crazy. So I now through the headquarters can get in touch with them and any doctor that is connected through those headquarters with the frequency specific microcurrent through Dr. McMakin's website, frequencyspecific.com, any doctor can, um, can get access to that frequency, have it be put on their um, computer, even if they don't know how to write their own programs, even if they don't know how to do anything but plug it in, and I can get that um, on their machine and you can try it which is so crazy. Like the fact that it ended up like that, that was never supposed to be how it happened. Like, again, the, it should be that there's no access to these frequencies other than the doctor who wrote them and they're proprietary. But because that doctor passed away and I had to get access to them and the headquarters were the only ones who could do it because even the, like the people who were working at the doctor's office who worked with the frequency machine could not find out how to extract those files from their own computer and like, email them to the other doctor. The headquarters had to go in there and extract them. Because they did that, I now have access to, my timer's going off of my machine. I now have access to those frequencies, um, including many, many, many others, like all the ones Dr. Robinson has used for me. Um, those include Parkinson's frequencies, those that he, the he made. Those include, um, let me see, trauma, extremity, um, custom ones he made for me, uh, think quick, spine cord pain, like spinal cord pain, nerve pain, I think that's a more typical one though. Um, yeah, so yeah, you're saying wow, I'm amazed too. Dr. Carolyn McMakin has a frequency she created called thalamic pain. She has treated um, several people with it. She, I think that she has, um, Everyone that she trains with frequency specific microcurrent and she has trained thousands around the globe has access to that frequency. So there's no true, real, only one way to know exactly how many patients have been treated with it at this point, but I know it's gotta be in the hundreds. Um, and everyone that has used that frequency that has had a thalamic stroke or has thalamic residual pain, 
um, they're getting benefit from that frequency. And that is one of the reasons why Dr. McMankin was so excited to join us on our advisory council because she holds one of those keys, you know, like the, these combination keys to unlock sort of what we could use to, to help treat, to help manage, to help potentially give some pain relief for those of us with central pain syndrome. The frequencies are a huge part of it. The hormones are a huge part of it. Um, you know, doctor, there's another doctor, we're not going to probably disclose his name until he would, you know, would or wouldn't come on the board, but he, he works a lot within just how, how do we live, you know, and find methods that work for each of us. And they're all non-invasive methods. And I love that. Um, and he's a, he, you know, got himself out of chronic pain after a crazy accident. So, um, it's pretty cool that there's, you know, these doctors who are wanting to help us. And it's going to help them because they're going to have more success stories to help their other patients. So the frequency specific microcurrent is a $2,500 machine that I have on me all the time now. And that is a one-time investment. Um, getting the frequencies put on and maintained just requires having a doctor nearby or anywhere. You can even ship the machine off to headquarters if you had to, to get your frequencies calibrated once a year at the very least. I personally like to get more frequencies added because um, I'm very technical and I have I've done a lot of research on the frequencies and I've been able to pair my own sequences and come up with ones that have actually now at this point after about four weeks of doing this one frequency I'm running right now my shoulder pain has gone down significantly because I came up with this set of frequencies um, and the doctor composed it for me so you know that's that's its own thing right frequency specific microcurrent FSM arc uses microcurrent. That's the only thing I know that it uses. It uses 100 to 400 amps, which my, this one uses 100 amps. Um, and there's a reason why it should be lower. But the, the ARC, for whatever reason, they found it to be effective with people going between 100, 100 up, then back to 400, then all the way back down to 100. So um, someone recently posted, I'm so sorry, I forgot uh, the, the name at the moment, that she was trying the ARC and it was making her pain worse. I have a theory. I can change the amperage on my FSM machine, and I went up to 200 the other night just to try it overnight. I had a very, like, hyperactive sleep episode where I was, like, just extra awake feeling in my sleep, extra agitated, extra something. And I think it was because there was more electricity current moving through me. So I think that the arc for those of us who are more sensitive um, and our nerves are going to kind of fire, um, we shouldn't try something that goes that high up in amperage. It's just a little more risky, I think. And it, hopefully it didn't hurt her or do something negative, but I know she was just trying the device. It, it She couldn't get access to this one and it was the only thing she could do at the moment. So totally understandable. We Again, like somebody said tonight, we'll try anything, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to meet her too, Scott, um, the Dr. Carolyn. So the PONS is something totally different, P-O-N-S. That is, it's a device that I, last I knew they're in like a trial stage um, and there's like a 70 maybe something percent success rate of this just sits on your tongue. I have no idea if it shocks you, if it's invasive, if it's just a light, if it's needles, I, I don't really know. It's just, it's $30,000. And my only point about it was that if you know what I mean, like for me personally, now I know everyone's different and everyone wants to try something different. Um, and everyone wants to try whatever they feel is the best use of their time and money, of course. But for me personally, because I could get access to someone here locally to try the frequencies with, and it was $1 a minute to try the frequencies. So, you know, $71 per treatment each time. Um, and I tried eight treatments before I bought the machine, but I knew after the very first treatment that this was gonna change my life um you know we all will find our thing i guess is my point and this this has been a cheaper route for me um the 30 grand may be a total solution for some of us i really hope it it is or can be i don't know i mean all i can say like i said before was the the channel and frequency specific microcurrent is like it has a channel tuned to each thing your body has each ailment your body could have a headache concussion, stomach tumor, like anything, um, there's, you know, there, I mean, and I don't want to like misquote and say such ridiculous things that I don't 
actually know there's frequencies for, but I looked at the lists and there's a lot. So um, I want to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about because I feel like I'm just going on and on and on about what has worked for me. And honestly, in the group, when I'm talking with people, I feel like that's all I'm doing right now. I'm really grateful. I'm really blessed. I feel strongly that I have experienced success with these protocols for a reason and I can help other people get on these protocols, but I'm not committed to shoving it down people's throats. I'm not committed to, you know, only preaching about that or whatever. Like, I just want y'all to know that we're all here to support each other. We can all find our way as we go. Um, we just want to create a safe place for you to vent if you need to, you know, I, when I was, when I first joined this group, actually, I had just discovered Dr. Tan's video. And so I had just discovered that I had central pain syndrome um, based on his video description. And I was in the process of starting to try to find a doctor for the hormones. So when I came to the group, when I first joined, I was always like, hey, have you guys heard of Prolo, which was something my doctor almost tried with me, the doctor who had heart attack. And it's like a needle injection to the bone introducing inflammation into the area and with the intention and plan that it will resolve itself and finish the healing process. I'm so glad I didn't try that. Um, I don't know if anyone here has tried Prolo, Prolo and I hope it works for you. Uh, not, not to be confused with Polo. It's Prolo, P-R-O-L-O. -O. Um, but what I learned since, and this is just my interpretation, not anything scientific, just my interpretation, is that um, inflammation, so this is based on a video I saw of Dr. McMakin that's on the CPSF website, video section under resources, okay? So about a third of the time, for whatever reason, and we don't know why, inflammation does not resolve. It just doesn't. And it's not about the person, it's not genetics, it's not that person's health or their background, it's it just is the way it is. And I think that we will get some answers from Dr. Tennant in future months about this being, you know, a scaled thing, that neuroinflammation on a wider scale being inflammation is this unresolved, you know, loop that gets stuck. So once I realized that, I was like, wow, I was this close to letting this doctor inject my body with inflammation and chances are given my luck like it was not it was only going to make it worse you know and he helped so many people with that protocol and I'm so glad that he did and it could have totally healed me I don't know but I just when it comes to like introducing an agent in the body that is you know harsh and gonna cause havoc and then resolve and there's like there's always those disclaimers like oh but there's like a one percent chance that you could be like the weird you know outside the box case i'm and i'm sure you guys understand are usually like that case right the the out of the box case so i'm always like eh, i'm really hesitant because i'm like i am that one percent um this is a people helping people organization and that's the way our focus is gonna remain i believe so that's when scott found the group when he first had his stroke and his brain surgery that he posted about recently um, was, and then he found um, the group that Louise had started. In 2020, we hope to have a conference here in Florida and um, fly in Dr. Tennant would be amazing. And he has definitely, you know, he was, he's just so gung ho about this foundation and, and being on the board, being on the, our advisory council. He's, I think Scott um, has talked with him on the phone personally and Tim has met him personally, so we are very excited. Need some restorative sleep. We all do. Um, oh, I don't want to talk about sleep again because I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I don't want to talk that, I don't want it to sound like I'm, oh, good, I'm sleeping, and yay me. You know, I, no. I, I've been there with you, and I was, I was, like, on the floor crying every night, devastated that I couldn't be sleeping, so I get it. Um, and I try, I really try to be hush hush about it other than the fact that because I found a solution, I just want to help other people try and find a solution for it. That's all. Um, talk about Colorado Springs. Okay. Our very first with this set of board members, very first in-person board member meeting. 
and we're gonna do planning. We're probably gonna have like a 10 year timeline planned out. Scott is a big future dreamer planner, expectant person, and he just loves to have all those, you know, the big mission on mind, and I love that. And I'm kind of like following behind him, like, what about this detail? What about that detail? What about this detail? So I'm a detail person. I'm a what's the very next step kind of person, but I think very big picture. And it's going to be great to just do a, a real mental, um, how do they call it? Mind meld, like download each other's information and vibes. And we're just going to, you know, be on the same page. We're going to um, just share tears and memories and I don't even know what <laughs> information and just have a great board meeting. I mean, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, so that's, that's exclusive to board members. So that's, I'm sorry, not something I just saying that. So, you know, like don't plan to go to Colorado at the end of July. We'd love to see you there, but you won't be able to sit in on the board meeting. I'm so sorry. Um, but it'll be, it'll be vital for the next, you know, decade of what we have coming. Uh, I want to talk about the fact that we really are looking for more volunteers right now. Um, this doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be a time consuming thing. Um, we're literally looking for someone to like run the Twitter, post a tweet every day. We're looking for someone to um, write our newsletters or blog for us. So if you're good at those things, that'd be great. We're looking for, um, we're always looking for more research members just because we don't want the weight of that to fall on one, you know, one or a few people's shoulders. We really ideally would love to have like 12 to 20 people in each of our teams, um, but we are a nonprofit organization, I can say that. And um, we just need help, like, like every other nonprofit in existence. Um, and, you know, I've said it before, guys, but I really mean it. Look, it's not about the numbers. It is not for me. I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking. I know I'm speaking for myself and for Scott and for Tim, but I'm speaking for myself. It's not about the numbers, okay? This is like our group. There's a thousand people in our group. We don't take lightly the fact that people are going to see the group on Facebook and go, man, there's a thousand people. That's too many. I want a more intimate environment. Guess what? We have the Warriors group, more intimate environment. We love that. We love that group. And we love that Virginia's. Um, sort of the, the, the mama bear there. We love her. Um, and there's going to be people who find the group go thousand people that that must not be a very big thing. Right. And we don't care. Like we we genuinely just want to help people and it's all about one person at a time. And I mean, I know like even here on this live stream, like there's people who don't know yet if they have central pain syndrome fully, like they just have a lot of pain. Well, we have things that can help. So we really hope to, you know, to be able to, at the very, very least, provide you with some friendship, some camaraderie, a place to turn at 3 a.m. when you can't sleep and you're in so much pain, you want to rip your eyeballs out and you just need a friend. Just post in our group. Just say, hey, need a shoulder to cry on. Personal message someone. Personal message me, please, anytime. Seriously, guys. Like, I daily go into the group and look for people who I can, like, welcome, comment, you know, whatever. But, like, please come to me directly. Um, like, I, I kind of feel, oh, Louise is here. Hi. Welcome. I'm so glad she's here. Louise, we're so grateful for you. Okay. So, hopefully, um, she's gone back and... and and we'll, you know, maybe watch this whole thing once it's like posted. But now that Louise is here, the party can get started. This is a party now. Okay, Louise, I'm Kelsey. It's great to officially meet you, though I know I'm not seeing your face now. Um, I'm the one behind the web stuff and uh, would love to just take a minute and or the rest of the meeting and just say thank you. Uh, thank you for starting this board. Thank you for starting this foundation. Thank you for your contribution through the Yahoo group and through migrating over to Facebook. If it weren't for you, none of us, literally, like, none of us would be here having this meeting right now. Um, and earlier there were, you know, I think, like, up to 13 people at a time, and we were all, oops, we were all, like, discussing, and it just has been amazing. And we've been talking about various topics that we never would have 
been brought together and discussed had it not been for you having created this group. Um, but really, like you started this, you're the reason why we're able to meet here and um, we're just grateful, grateful that you, you know, you did this and we're, we're grateful to, to sort of be your running mates and like take, the baton and keep running with you and and with you as our emeritus president emeritus and um we're just we're just grateful so again you can go cps.foundation slash patient hyphen stories or just go to the patient stories page and you can read my story louise i need to put your story up there please so if you can send it to me or point me in the direction of finding it i will definitely put your story up there if you want me to um, and just the things that have helped us, the things that we are excited to be on the board about. Um, we're really, we're just, we're just, we're in a sweet spot right now. I feel like all of us on the board about just, you know, a lot of us have been through a lot of pain lately. People like have been in a lot of pain in the group. We just hosted a, a pity party for how much <laughs> pity and pain we've been in lately. Um, so like as a board, like I just feel like between, you know, I'm mostly these days talking with like Michelle, Scott and Tim, and we're just like in a really sweet spot in our mentality about just bringing hope to people and bringing, you know, the potential of even just the next step in their process, whether that be go find a neurologist and ask them for you know, gabapentin, like is just the next step, like whatever it may be, you know, and, um, or if it's, you know, we're here for you through the surgery, we're just, you know, we're just excited to bring hope to people. Our website is just like a concrete foundation right now. Um, we want it to be so intergalactic <laughs> in terms of how much information and of a resource hub it's going to be. I mean, there will be links in places you don't even think there could be links. There's like, you'll, you'll like blow on your phone and it takes you to a different page. I'm just kidding. But no, like there's going to be links everywhere and it's going to take you to like this person's story about this and, and that person's experience and like this recommendation and here's a resource video about this. But right now it's, it's, yeah, it was pretty pitiful. Uh, I mean, the, the, the pity party, that is. The, the website right now is a huge hub of tenants' work because he has given us full access to access any of his papers, any of his, um, you know, published, documented uh, reviews who put on the CPSF um, Foundation website, CPS Foundation website. And, um, we have, so under the article section and printable section, you will only find tenant right now, but in the future, it's going to like be 20 gazillion pages long with every possible thing we can get put up there. Um, video section is really the video section right now. It's like a thumbnail, right? There's like a, you know, there's like a, a 12, maybe nine something videos, but those if you just went and watched every single one of those videos, you, I think, would know as much about central pain syndrome as I know, at least, and probably way more than a lot of doctors. Um, so I want to add more videos, but I don't want to make it overwhelming. So I really tried hard to just condense it to the really important ones for now. I know 10 years ago, Louise, um, CPS was a generally unknown illness. Ten years ago, I got CPS that I know of, that I know of. I had an upper spinal cord injury when I was seven, so 20 years ago, and that caused pain, but it wasn't ever a process of a degenerating, like a, like a, my, neuro, my neurology of my brain and my spinal cord practically degenerating until 10 years later. So the concussion, that's what started that process for me. So I, you know, that was, who even knew, like, that you could hit your head, that you could literally, isn't this a phrase, fall off any horse and hit your head, that's exactly what I did, fell off a horse, hit my head, and um, get central pain syndrome, like what, nobody knew, and, and the, the information that Tenet is privy to now about neuroinflammation, about the, the central nervous system, 
you know, literally going into shock and shutting itself down and how we can catch that process and send it the other direction is okay. Crazy. I called his clinic one day and he picked up the phone and I was like, what? so that was right before I got an HCG and I had just talked to a doctor who's who I, I did what I told you guys to do earlier. I printed out the paper on HCG, handed it to them, showed it to them. And they said, yeah, this is, this is inconclusive. This is incomplete information. This is not enough to go by. This is not something I'm going to prescribe for you. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think you should try it. I don't think you should go this route at all. And it's just not worth my time. I just had that meeting with a doctor and I, I just had a feeling like I needed to call Dr. Tennant's office right then. And I did. He picked up the phone and I said, I talked to him and he, he literally told me on the phone, well, there's no reason why I can't help you get a prescription for HCG. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. That was February 7th, 2017. February 15th, 2017, I started HCG. And it wasn't because he actually made the connection for me. It like that just gave me enough hope to keep trying. And the next doctor I saw was the one who started me on it. Pretty crazy, right? So amazing. I love it. Um, okay. I'm, I've talked my heart out about HCG except for like how many tears were lost when I had to go when I, when it went bad on accident, like I kept it out of the fridge. Don't do this, please guys. Don't do this. It went bad. Oh, <sighs> There were particles floating around in it, and I did not think anything of it until I was on a trip with my parents, and then I got back, and I was like, I get everything all the time. Well, my HCG had gone bad, so I'm going to, like, skip the tears and skip everything else. But, yeah, it's it's an amazing hormone, and you don't want to not be on it if you've been on it, if you know what I mean. Um, just follow the doctor's orders, please. Don't do what I did. And uh, unfortunately, like I told you, I was kind of backed into a corner the first week. I had to go without it my first month after being on it. But that aside, just don't abruptly stop things like without doctor's orders. That's not safe. And I've done it too many times. Accidentally, it's a no-go. Made me worse. Yes, Dr. Tennant is a hero. He, he is the lark in my life that like lifted the initial strings of hope in my world and I have been so blessed to be able to get on the protocol be able to have success with the protocol um, with the CPSF leading the way there will be a nationwide awareness of the brutal disease that millions of us are buried in literally buried by it's true and Louise thank you I mean there's only one person who could ever start a foundation right and you're the one and we're so grateful Okay, two biggest questions. Louise is saying, how do I stop this horrible pain? What a good question. So every single person's horrible pain is unique. We're all completely unique individuals. There's no two pains alike, just like there's no two fingerprints alike. Now, while many of us experience similar sensations of pain, burning, and is there a cure? Okay, I'll get there. Um, we experience burning, numbing, freezing, stabbing. I mean, Scott just posted like, perception of pain is everything. What's your perception of your pain? And the the list, it was it was way more vibrantly colorful in terms of words and descriptions than you would ever see on any doctor's list of like, please describe your pain. And you check off all those boxes. I used to just check them all off because yes, I experienced all those pains. But it didn't, it just, no, like, didn't do it justice. So the post that Scott just made, yeah, crazy. We all have such a unique experience. Um, and I would say, you know, how do we stop the pain? That's totally an individualized discovery process. Um, I wish it weren't, you know, I wish I could just say, oh, here's this miracle pill, just take it and it'll just shut off the pain. Or, you know, here's, well, there's, there's this device called the Quell device and it's supposed to stop pain signals. Cool. It works for some people. 
doesn't work for other people. That's everything. It doesn't actually cure anything. It doesn't actually treat anything. So I personally, here's, I'm only going to answer Louise for me because I know everyone's going to be asking for them. How do I stop the pain? Right? I can only answer for me because I'm the only one who can affect my own experience. And I, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't do anything about everyone else's experience. Um, all I can do is pass on what's worked for me. So, um, for me, uh, the first step was acknowledging and stopping the process of ignoring the pain. Because I was told as a child that, well, I was a very athletic kid, and I was told no pain, no gain. I was told don't complain. I was told, you know, if you're not if you're not burning, like, you know, your muscles aren't burning, then you're not like stretching and growing. I was a gymnast. I was an equestrian. I did tennis, um, ballet, dance. Yeah, all of it. And I just thought this amount of pain, like that I was in as a child was what people normally experienced. And it took me 20 years to realize this is not normal. So the first step for me was to acknowledge that I had pain and realize that other people didn't have this pain. Maybe you're already there. Maybe you're way beyond that. You're like, I'm in the phrase of like trying to get people to, to believe that I have pain. Um, and I get that too. That's part of it. But for me, my first step was just accepting. Um, then I really had to ask myself honestly like get get on my knees with my own soul and say like what is your life going to be about like is this pain going to be what stops you from living or your reason for going on and you know i haven't dealt with suicidal thoughts before, but I know a lot of us have, or manic, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I definitely had that moment where it was like, am I going to get on, for me, okay, for me, and I do not mean this in any disparaging way against anyone else. For me, choosing the route of, like, disability would have been a total, I give up, you know, like, that's, that's it. But I was unwilling to go that route. Um, and that's why you will never see me discuss disability in the group because I have no experience about it and I have no, like, I just can't speak to it at all because I have no experience. So, um, and I, and I highly love and appreciate everyone and every route they take is accepted and okay. And it has nothing to do with anyone. It's just me. To me, that felt to me like I would have given up. So like that would have been my suicide, you know? Um, so I chose a different route. I just got honest with myself and said, and I'm not going to take this a direction like that by our guidelines, we shouldn't go, but I'm going to like just drop little bits where you'll understand. Um, but yeah, like for me, my relationship with God was part of it, you know, is, is, is a huge, it's, that's kind of all it's about for me, but, um, just realizing this could, this pain could be a, a tool it could be something objective. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be what, what causes my demise. It could be what causes how I will become the best version of myself. And by the time, I always knew in my heart that healing has been in my future and I am healed, and I will be healed, and I've always believed it, and no one can take that belief away from me. It's just deep said in my gut. I don't care if it never happens. I just believe it. Um, okay, three minutes left. We're working on it. Sorry. So we may go a little over, because I want to answer the cure question, too. So um, I just realized at one point, or it was a, it was a process of unraveling discovery that if I had an, an experience where I was abruptly like miraculously healed 
um, I would want to go on living my life from that point forward being a different person, like not being a selfish bratty twit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so I, I was really prideful. I was really controlling. I was a lot of things. And, um, yeah, the strength is in believing. I hear you. Um, I was, I was a kind of rotten attitude person, like negative self-talk, all the kind, all those things. There came a point where I realized I am cool with at any point from now until whenever is my time being healed. Um, I'm just gonna, that's out of my hands, like a, a miraculous healing, you know, be walking out of the house one day and being hit by a rhinoceros, like, and it changing my life forever. That is out of my control. But what's in my control is who I become as a process of this being in my life. And if this daily, constant, devastating, excruciating pain that I literally wake up to and want to roll over the other side of the bed and never know about again, go back to sleep and never know about again and just go back to my slumber, right? like sleeping beauty or something. I, you know, I realized like if that's going to be in my life, let's just make it, let's force it to be a positive outcome. Like why does this have to be something that takes me down and out, you know? And not many people think that way. And I don't mean that as a, a down, putting down anyone. I just like, the more people I talk to, the more people I realize that, like, you know, there's just a smaller sector of people who believe that when you truly are positively thinking about everything possible, that that attracts, like, good into your life, that attracts blessings and healing and, and just more positives. We got to flood the negatives with 10 times of the positive. And I just, I know that from so many other courses and seminars and things that I've taken and done that um, it just kind of, I grabbed, copy pasted and translated that into this area of my life of being like, we just have to, we just have to keep going, you know? So, okay. So for me, it's all, it's all been about just never, ever, 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 ever giving up. And I really feel for the people who've been posting lately and who always post, you know, just about like, gosh, I'm having a hard time finding a doctor and this person's rejection and rejection and just all the stuff we go through and my family doesn't get it. You know, I can't afford the bus to go get my medication, like all the things I get it. Wow. It's insane. And, um, I, I really hear that. I really have been there. Um, the only bit of advice I can give you is just don't give up. You know, just my willingness to never, ever, ever take no for an answer is the reason I'm alive. I was also, a, a I wasn't technically a preemie baby, but I was like early, born early. And let me tell you, honey, I came out screaming. I was a fighter. I think that's translated into this. Like my parents tell me like you are alive because you want to be alive. <laughs> and that is the only reason. And I mean, other, you know, whatever you want to call it, Dee Dee being wants me alive too. Yes. But you know, willpower, just there's something to be said for like being gutsy about Yes, something positive will come of this. I don't know what, I don't know when, I don't know where from. I don't know who I'll meet tomorrow that will be the worst person I could have possibly met that will make me so sad I'll want to cry for three years or that will be the most amazing person that will help me through this and we will be forever friends and hold hands right off into the sunset. Like, you just never know who you're going to meet. And I think that whole you never know um, really got me through of like, you just, you never know what hope tomorrow could bring. Just one more day, one more day. So um, that has been for me, like that's, that's the core, that's the foundation of everything treatment I've done. Um, when I started the hormone route and, or was starting to pursue the hormone route and just got rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection from doctors, 
I just kept going and just, I would never, ever take no for an answer. It just didn't phase me. I mean, it phased me. It, it knocked me back on my butt and I was like, that stinks, man. Next thing. Okay. Find the next one. But if that doctor won't, won't prescribe it for you, I, I didn't think it was bad that one of the doctor's offices literally called me and reamed me out at how illegal she believed it to be that I had four doctors at one time prescribing various things for me because my one doctor walked off the job and I could not find one doctor to prescribe all those things for me. And I was trying to get on the hormones and I was seeing three or four different doctors at the time. And you know, that I had that, that that was my case and that I was willing just like that to flip through another doctor and if they weren't going to give me what I wanted, I would just go to the next doctor. She was like yelling at me on the phone. And I will tell you my story, how I got this in a second, TJ. Um, it never occurred to me that her being so mad at me and telling me that that's illegal should deter me from getting the treatment I needed. It just didn't, like... Why? Why would I let someone who that's like they have that much hate in their heart that they feel they have to patrol even someone who's literally leaving their practice as a, as a patient that wasn't even there for a month hardly like yell at me over this and I'm going to what now give up my hopes and dreams of finding someone to prescribe this and a cure? Like, no, never. <laughs> that's just no. So that's the kind of like guts I'm talking about. Like you got to be willing to just take the nose and let them fall off your back like water off a duck's back. Just keep going. Um, yeah, like 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 Kathy says, find your joy. I think I've said that about five times already. Um, so how I got this, I want to go back to Louise's question because she has, she said these two questions people are going to ask the most are most are how do I deal with the pain? How do I stop the pain? Right? And for me. Um, just try. Just get on oxytocin, guys. Please. It is amazing. It's a it's a pain. Okay. It's the painkiller that when you are giving birth to a baby, your body produces in such a mass quantity that it stops your body from dying from the pain of childbirth. That's oxytocin. So please, just try it. I promise, guys, you're not going to have a baby. Just get on oxytocin. <laughs> Your life will be so much better. I'm a positive, happy person who's dreaming again, who's thinking about the future, who's like able to have this conversation because of oxytocin. Please just try it. So how do I stop the pain? My first recommendation, get on oxytocin. Um, I take trochies, which are a, um, maybe I shouldn't have shown you that, right? That's like my full name and birth date. Um, but anyways, they're trochies, so they're like little um, mint, uh, flavored powder mixed in like whatever they look like braces wax and you put them under your tongue um trochee pronounced trochee sounds looks like troche like t-r-o-c-h-e troche looks like troche um okay uh tj i i will answer your question um and my story is on the side as well so yes you can go there and read it um, okay, the cure, the cure question, the big, the big C, right? Is there a cure for central pain syndrome? I am going to do my best job answering this question as I possibly can. So, number one, no. Okay, hang on. I just only am stopping myself there because TJ just asked another question, so I'm going back. Are these hormones for males as well? Yes, TJ. HCG and oxytocin are both hormones completely suitable for males and females alike. No adverse side effects. HCG is a, is a um, hormone that's grown in the brain of both, and it's also the, the central nervous system restorative hormone. Um, you want to have all, as Scott just mentioned, all of your other hormone levels balanced. Make sure those, none of those are depleted. If any of your hormones are depleted, here's something I, I should have just mentioned this first off. Any of your hormones are depleted, your medication is not going to be being absorbed. Sorry. 
nor vitamins, nor nutrients. Hormones need to be balanced first. Then you can look into getting on HCG and being on medication and painkillers and whatever you need. Um, I'm also still on a strong painkiller, so, you know, we could talk about that too. We, um, but yeah, they're safe. They're fine for males and females. Oxytocin is a hormone that's released at many different times. Like when you hug someone for nine seconds, um, moments of intimacy, blah, 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 breastfeeding, all that. It's, it's a it's very, very, very strong hormone. Um, so you definitely feel like all the warm fuzzies when you, when you are taking it. It's not unsafe at all for men to take, um, just as safe. And you're not gonna, if, okay, you definitely though, if you're pregnant, you need to talk to your doctor because I don't think you can get on these hormones if you're pregnant. And if you want to become pregnant, you got to just follow along with tenant and figure out exactly how to get off them and everything. I'm going to go back to the cure. No, there's not a cure. I am very sorry to inform you. Um, our website says it very clearly at this present time that we know of there is no cure for this condition. Research says it. There's just there's nothing that's pointing us in a direction that says 10 out of 10 patients have experienced it. You know, I'm sorry. No. Love you. Um, to Louise. And it's unfortunate. I, when I watched Dr. Tennant's video for the first time before joining the group, I, and he said the word reversible, that like, that was the beginning of my hope. I mean, my hope being broadened beyond just, again, that deep set belief that I had in my heart of like, I will be healed. Um, it, it was like, there's a doctor who's saying that the effects of this, even possibly the source of this is reversible. That's amazing. Like, do you know how many other chronic illnesses there are where there's no cure? Crazy. Or no, no reversibility, no treatment even hardly. So, okay. Talk to Tim about the original treatment. Perfect. Cool. So ketamine. Um, ketamine is worth looking into. And if you're going to look into ketamine, please talk to someone who's done it before because eh, I can't curse, but it's horrible to get off of. Don't do it. It's, it's bad. Um, just don't do it abruptly, please. Don't get on it abruptly. Don't get off it abruptly. If you're going to do it, do it slow and only do what you have to like the base amount that you have to do. I had to go up to such a high percentage of it that like the doctors were worried for my ability to live and I became dependent chemically on it and I had a major episode trying to get off it um that that literally landed me back in bed for six months um just because of a memory wipe like that wasn't even the physical part of it that was just the memory wipe that I had from ketamine so please be careful guys with ketamine the infusions are way better um I think but just be careful I think we can really help people manage their pain. I believe there will be a cure. I believe we will find the cure. I believe in my lifetime that, especially with Tennant leading the way, even if he's the one who blazes the trail for the next doctor to come through and go, oh, it's just this piece and this piece. We connect these two dots and ching, now we have a cure. Like it may be that simple, it may not. Extremely complex neurological dysfunctions, neurologically degenerative syndromes like this one are so complex that doctors don't even know. Like, there's so much about the brain that doctors don't even yet know. They're, they're, they're still slow to accept the concept of neuroplasticity and the brain's ability to change in physical actuality in terms of the DNA structure and protein in the brain based on our thoughts. Like they're still like, I just barely accepting that as reality. It just feels too wishy-washy to them that we have that kind of power um, over our bodies through our thoughts. So all that to say, I think it's gonna be a bit of a lag, you know, 20, 30, maybe 50 years from now. I wish it was like five, but yeah, it may be a while. Um, I got, central pain syndrome from a concussion, most likely. Um, when I was 17, I was riding a horse and he gave a happy buck at the same moment where I came landing on him, um, jumping without stirrups, which is not recommended. And uh, I landed on his back the same moment he bucked. 
I went backwards sideways and he tried really desperately to avoid stepping on me. I was wearing my, um, the Barnes helmet, not my helmet. And unfortunately, if I was wearing my helmet, it would have come below where he nicked me in the brain. But um, because it was not my helmet, it, it, it didn't cover that area. And um, I stood up, everything went completely light yellow. And I um, went over to walk over to a fence to rest on the fence. And by the time I had gotten over to the fence, I had blacked out and I bounced off it, fell on the ground. Next thing I knew, my instructor's looking down at me and she's going, no, you're not all right. And I'm like, me? <laughs> so anyways, I did black out and he was like, yeah, you might have had like a minor concussion, but you're fine. Um, so I didn't think anything of it. Not one single thing of it until I was looking up Dr. Tennant's video and I found his thing on centralized pain. And um, it said, have you ever hit your head hard enough to black out? And I was like, dang it, I have. I guess I have. So that's when I realized, yeah, wait, CPS, I actually technically have had a central nervous system um, shock or injury. Um, but right after that, it's really difficult with me to figure out I'm still learning why even I have this, what it's from. But within the same year, I got stunned by um, the second most deadly caterpillar in Brazil. And uh, in, in America, it's the most deadly. And um, I also got the swine flu, probably swine flu, maybe other flu, something bad flu. At that time when the swine flu existed in Brazil, I was in Amazonas in the heart of the jungle, having been stung by a caterpillar in a loft, listening to the birds and the frogs. And I was just like, this is the worst thing I've ever been in. And that was the start of my CPS. And um, I love Brazil still though. Anyways, so yeah, it's it's a crazy story. I don't really fully understand it yet. I think all the details I can disclose in terms of I'm sure enough to put it publicly out there um, are on the website. Um, okay, one more question from TJ. Where's my pain located? Um, okay, it depends on my activity level. And because the last two days I've been doing like more sitting forward, like talking to you here. And yesterday I was working a concession stand um, volunteering so I was doing more standing and like you know leaning forward so now like the line between my upper spine and mid spine just is sore feeling and I think that's from lack of muscle buildup because I've been laying a lot and kind of out of it a lot lately um, need to rebuild muscle but on a typical you know day everything since the concussion that has been injured or like flus I've had or viruses, uh, that's where I hurt. So I've had a lot of insane um, injuries since then, like like injuries that don't make any sense. Um, I pulled a muscle in my back on the left side of my spine. I sprained my left ankle. I injured both um, knees like they snapped and both hips like went out basically. Um, from rollerblading and I sat down and my blades went out from underneath me and something snapped. Um, then I had wisdom tea surgery. So my right inner ear jaw, it literally feels like, and I know you've been watching me, this side of, like I have to consciously think about smiling with it up um, and talking with it up. So my, this whole side of my face, jaw, tongue, lip, everything, ear, inner ear, where the tooth was, Still feels like it happened like last week, the surgery, yay. Because my tooth was what fragmented and the nerve was exposed. And because CPS works the way CPS works, an exposed nerve is as good as a damaged nerve. So it just acts like it was still damaged. But thankfully, frequencies are helping me. The beamers helped me. I can smile again, I can talk again. Like for a while, I just could not use. I couldn't floss, I couldn't brush, I couldn't so many things. But I, it's, it's we're, we're on the upswing. Um, Okay, back of my head, right hind brain, where the concussion was, a line all the way down my shoulder. Um, I rode some horses that were fallout horses, where they would fall out to the left and just want to go straight back to the barn. And I'd spent so much time yanking them to the right. And the right direction when riding was my hard direction, and the left was my soft direction, and the horse I was on, it was the same thing. He was soft to the left, and he was hard to the right. So we both fought a lot, and I have a lot of, like, just, I think my muscle probably must have tore apart and 
got back together and tore apart many times because that's just the kind of pain that my shoulder has been in. Both shoulders, but especially right. Um, but again, since these frequencies, a lot less pain. My cat, my lovely cat, you can see right there, my lovely scar. My cat attacked me because I stopped her from attacking a dog and she attacked me instead. Um, and cat bites are awful. In case you didn't know, they almost always get infected. And uh, yeah, that got infected. That was bad. And it's only because the most recent frequencies I've been doing, um, nerve inflammation, nerve trauma, nerve toxicity, um, uh, trauma hindbrain, inflammation hindbrain, trauma shoulder, nerve pain shoulder, inflammation shoulder, um, that my brain, you know, hindbrain, shoulder, and hand are like functional and in much less pain. But right now, the thing that hurts the most is definitely like the base of my shoulders, just where they, my shoulder blades come together. Um, and that's just from the last two days of sitting like I'm sitting now, so I need to not do that. But yeah, um, uh, there's, I know there's more parts of my body that hurt, I just can't think of them. Yeah, just, I know, y'all have, y'all, y'all simple people with your strokes, y'all got sides, and it's simple. It's like, oh, everything from my head to my toe on the right side. Well, I hate it for you that you're in that much pain, um, but just, you know, hate it as much as I hate it for me because it takes me 20 times as long to describe all the places I have pain because it's literally that scattered from all the injuries I've had. I'm just, I'm just an athletic person who refuses to sit still. And I have been very foolish in my athletic pursuits and I've continually like re-injured myself. Like that, the pulled muscle in my back was from literally doing what? Yes. P90X ab every single day for like a hundred days straight and not giving myself any days rest because my brother and I kind of did this little challenge with each other. Can you do it every day? Yes, I can. Can you? And I had an amazing six pack and then bent over to get something out of the laundry hamper and snap. I haven't been able to do hardly anything with my abs or back since. And that was 2012. So yeah, my injuries have all happened kind of, the concussion was 2009. So yeah. Okay. And I'm probably going to close this out in a second. Just wanted to um, say we appreciate you, Scott as the president of the foundation and Tim treasurer. And, um, we just so appreciate everyone's contribution. Michelle, you are the heart lady. You are the heart person behind, um, the, the caring team. You're behind the group. You're posting in there every day and just loving on people and relating to people. What an incredible job you're doing there. We so appreciate you. We want to thank, um, Robert Bechtel as well for being the funny bone and just his, his work on the board as vice president. And um, all of us are, Kathy, we appreciate you and the research you're doing. Um, thank you so much for your dedication to, you know, your husband's practice and then doing research with us on the side. I think the only thing I really wanted to portray with this live meeting was we are so excited for what we have in our hands, what we're doing, and we are here to help you. Um, we hopefully have some hope to bring to the table and um, resources. Go to the resources section of the cps.foundation website. Go to the topics section of the group on Facebook and check out the search feature in the group and search any word. Opioids, someone's name, um, you know, chelation, it could be anything you could search for, and you'll find some really helpful information. Um, we just want to be a resource hub. We want to be a family and a friendly group, and we just want to be a people helping people organization, and that's what we're excited to be doing.